welcome to the December 2022 Not for Profit Hero from Stirk Family Law Group. I'm Gwendolyn Stirk, and I'm going to introduce you to a new organization called Rise. And we're privileged to have Jennifer Ramirez with us today. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, how are you? I'm good. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do at Rise? Sure. So I'm Jennifer Ramirez, and I'm the founder and executive director of And Rise. So we are a nonprofit organization where our mission is to empower women to be the ultimate versions of themselves, no matter what adversities they face. So we offer free counseling in Illinois, uh, free support groups for women that have survived sexual and domestic abuse. Uh, we do financial education for women and uh, professional development. So we help with resume, uh, cover letter, and mock interviewing skills. And we also do a lot of women empowerment events, as well as teaching women about healthy relationships and what's normal and what's not normal and red flags. That way women can just live their best life and be that best version of themselves, um, whether we're helping them personally or professionally. Sure. So as the founder of the organization, you found a need for these services. Can you give us a little background about the development of the organization? Sure. So I started and Rise in 2019, but I went full time with it in March of 2020, literally the week before the pandemic, uh, before we went to stay in place. So actually it had started off as just more like a women empowerment um, type of organization. But because of COVID, actually, we saw a need for support groups. I saw a need. I saw a lot of women on Facebook complaining that they were suffering from depression and anxiety, just like a lot of us were. We we're all freaking out. We didn't know what was going on. Um, so I was like, let me start a support group. And that support group very quickly turned into trauma and abuse because a lot of women were like, I'm getting these flashbacks from things that happened to me when I was a kid, it, you know, and just as time went on, we continued to see a really big need. So we started out with one virtual support group and now we're up to four virtual or four support groups per week, one in one in person and three virtually. So that's so, kind of how it all started. <laughs> well, that's very cool. So these four different support groups, do they focus on different topics depending on which one you join? How does that work? Yes. So Monday and Thursday nights are for both uh, sexual and domestic abuse or any type of trauma. And then Wednesday night is specifically for domestic abuse, which includes in, um, emotional abuse, financial abuse, um, that type of stuff, as well as physical abuse. And then Friday night um, group is just for sexual assault, sexual abuse, um, anything sexual um, in nature. So, so yes, they're all different topics. Sure. So I can imagine that sometimes it's difficult to participate in a group. You know, you're kind of giving up your, you know, name and you're attending. If somebody wants to join and they come into your support group on Zoom, can they use another name? Do they have to reveal themselves? How does this work? Yes. So we are very, um, we understand where these women are coming from, especially if it's their very first time. We get a lot of women that this is their very first support group ever in their life. So they come in very nervous. And I really care about making sure that women feel heard um, and seen and comfortable their their safety and comfortability is really really important to us so we do allow women if they don't want to be on camera they do not have to be on camera they don't have to speak if they just want to go and listen because there's a lot of people that want to go but they're not ready to talk yet so there's right. girls that come for months until they're finally ready to talk so we give them that space even if you're not ready yet but some people really enjoy um and find it helpful to hear other people's stories first and then it gives them that kind of comfortability to go on and, and speak about themselves so yeah, and in person, we obviously can't have you off camera, you know, but it's a little different in person too. But yeah, we don't ask for personal information really. I mean, if we do ask like first name and last name, but we're not sharing that with anyone. It's just for our internal um, record, basically. So it sounds like a really nice way for somebody to start to get help, even though if they're afraid to do so, which is really Absolutely. Awesome. So yeah. how does the support groups differ from the empowerment piece that you were talking about? Yeah, so support groups is a weekly thing, you know, and, and a lot of the women that come, they've been coming for a while. And so they really just find it comforting to be around other women that just get it. They understand what they're going through. Um, and it's it's just kind of an ongoing thing. And it's very much like a family. Like, I know it sounds kind of like cheesy, but it's true. Like, we do become family because we're sharing some of our deepest and darkest secrets with yeah, each other. Right. And so, you know, and we're not judging each other and we're not like, oh, you know, like, so when yeah. people aren't reacting that way to your story, it makes you feel like, wow, these people like really right. care about me. They're not telling me to right. get over it. Like my family is, you exactly. know, um, yeah. 
And so that's what makes it a little bit different um, than our empowerment events. Obviously, our empowerment events is like a one and done type of thing. So you don't kind of get that type of vibe because we're, you know, these, a lot of these people have built relationships with each other, even outside of the group and with us. So it's very, it's a different vibe, but it's a good one. Either way, whatever you decide to come to, it's still always going to get the positive and empowering vibes that you know we're, we're going for. <laughs> so let me understand. So there's support groups and then there's the empowerment piece that you can get involved in. And then is there individual therapy as well that you can get either in person or online? So we do work with a third party um, counseling practice. They're called Holistically Divine and they do amazing work. We get great, great feedback from the women that have gone through the counseling program. By the way, it's only in Illinois right now because our counselors can't counsel over state lines sure. and it is virtual counseling. It's not in person. Um, but, uh, yeah, we get really great, um, feedback from them and they do take the holistic approach to counseling, which is spirituality and like yoga and meditation and, uh, mindfulness and things like that. Things that I think are really, really helpful for me as a survivor and healing. Um, so that's why I decided to go with them and they do just really great, great work. And they also do, um, if we needed, um, other people to do like, sorry, I, can't speak. Um, if we needed other languages, they also do Spanish and uh, um, I think it's uh, Arab Arabic Arabic. <laughs> yeah, so Arabic and Spanish. Now, also, you provide services to help people interview and get ready for that interview to get back into the job market. How does that piece look like? What does it look like? Yes. So um, I work again with another third party person that I just, I know. Um, and so this is not free, but it is very affordable. So she can either mock up your resume for $39 okay. um, or she can redo your entire resume, I believe for $59. And then she also does the mock interviewing skills. Um, and I think that's about a two hour thing that you do like, you know, interviewing skills with her. And that's $79. So it's very, very affordable to the women that we serve. And obviously, if you can't afford it, then, you know, we can talk and we can see if we can get you, you know, something for free that maybe Ann Rice can pay for. Um, but yeah, and this woman is really great. She has 20 years experience of doing this work. Um, and I think she does really great work, which is why we decided to work with her. So, so yeah, so we that's do offer that as well. Now, as a not-for-profit, obviously, you have to get some volunteers in, I assume, and have people work with you. So if somebody's listening today and they say, hey, this sounds like a really great organization and I would like to start giving back, how can people get involved? Sure. So if you wanted to get involved, you can visit our website. We do have like a um, how to get involved, volunteer with us, and then you can just like fill out the form and I will get in touch with you or you can reach out to me. Um, directly jennifer at womenrisechicago.org and just let me know that you're interested in some type of volunteering position we do have like you know admin administrative assistant um, a support group facilitator you know social media just there's a lot of different things we always need help um, so yeah so if you're definitely interested in getting involved we are definitely looking for volunteers <laughs> now do you have any events coming up or maybe you're doing a fundraiser or something where the community can get more information about what it is that you do Sure. So we do have our Galentines. It will be our fourth annual Galentines um, brunch coming up in February. I believe it's February 11th, 2023. Um, so we serve brunch, um, mimosas, and then we teach women about self-care and self-love and loving your authentic self. And at, this year I'm working with a woman called Jamika Smith, who um, upholsters furniture and she has a for-profit and a non-profit. And so we're going to be reupholstering a chair together. And it's essentially to to talk to women about shedding those old parts of themselves and then creating something new and beautiful. And, you know, there's a bigger purpose behind that to empower right. women. And then we will take that chair, everybody will sign it, and then we're going to donate it to a woman's shelter. Um, some, I'm not sure where yet, but we will donate it to a woman's shelter. So, so yeah, so that's our, one of our events that does really well every year. Women really, really enjoy it. It's really fun. And they of course love the mimosas and, and but also learning about self-love and, and what that looks like because a lot of people unfortunately don't know sure and then any other events where you're fundraising trying to get money in for your organization that you can identify for us yeah so right now we're actually doing a fundraiser right now um it's called our survive and rise fundraiser it's like our end of the year fundraiser so if you're interested in that um it's actually www.givebutter.com slash and rise 
Um, and we can, of course, put that in the chat um, so you guys can. Uh, but if you're interested in donating, we're definitely look, looking for donations for the end of the year so that we can ramp up 2023 and help more women that, that are, are in need of our services. Right. And if somebody listens in the future to this in 2023, they can also give through that link as well. Um, yes, you can also give through that link as well, or you can just visit our website, www.womenrisechicago.org. And as soon as you click on the website, you'll see a donate button. <laughs> and you can just click sure. on that. And right, sure. You know, and it seems so interesting because I think that people really do have to have those support groups. I'm a large advocate of support groups because, and having that forum to do it online and having it acceptable that you really can create still your secret, so to speak, but still start listening and learning until you're ready to come out and say, hey, I'm a victim as well, and I need to move forward with my life. Yeah, so absolutely. I think, I, I think that's very unique. Yeah, I, I love the support groups, and they've been healing for me as a facilitator. Like, sure. it, it still helps me till this day, and I love them, and I know that they help a lot of people, so that's why I always talk about them, um, and, and it's free. So it's like, you know, if, if you're struggling and you don't have to pay for, for something that can really help you, why not? You know? Absolutely. And if you're listening today and you've been the victim or you're not even sure, you know, I think sometimes questions arise in someone's mind. Is this abusive behavior? Is it not? Is this something I should worry about? Is this a sign that I should start doing something? People have a lot of questions and this is a place that you can go, you know, and be hidden and be there endless listening. And maybe you put a question up in the chat or use another name, right? For a period of time. Not that I'm advocating for that, but people need to get some answers to these questions and understand where others are coming from. Absolutely. And you can always, I, I did give you my email, again, Jennifer at womenrightschicago.org. I'm always happy to jump on calls with people or email back and forth. I've done it, still do it every day. Um, so don't be afraid. I don't bite. I'm very nice. And I know what you're going through. I know what it's like to actually kind of uncover that something you went through was abuse. I know I actually didn't know a lot of the things I went through were abuse until I started and rise and I started learning about it. And I was like, right. Oh my God, every relationship I was in was abusive. And I didn't even know. So. And the one message okay I, I want to get across today is just because you're abused doesn't mean life is over. There's, it can be a Absolutely. new beginning and it can be an empowering instead of making it a negative, you can certainly turn it into a positive and use this to help others and help yourself move forward, right? It's absolutely, I think that's absolutely. a misconception that a lot of people have within that context. So that's, that's the meaning behind our logo. It's the it, and means your story isn't over yet. There's more to tell and the rise means rising above any adversities. So, you know, I've been through childhood sexual abuse, domestic, a lot of different types. And, you know, I could have been like, well, what was me? And I did get into that. What was me? You know, for sure. a long time, but I was one day I was just like, you know what, like I can either stay here and be mad at everybody and myself, or I can move forward and do something. And here I am doing something. Um, and it's changed my life for the better. And I love helping people. And it's been very healing for me to, to put my story out there and to also help others because of sharing it. Well, what a unique way for us to kind of tie into your entity and rise. And it kind of gives you a motivational story right now. So if you're listening today, look, there is help and there are people out there that will help you and provide the services. So all you have to do is reach out and take that first step. Thank you very much for your time today. We really appreciate it. No, thank you for having me. I appreciate it.